Guys, we ready? What do you think? Okay. Good luck. Raško and Igor from Bosch. Uh, two of our own guys from Bosch, yeah. Good luck. Thank you. So, hi. Right. Thank, thanks to all. Uh, I wish you a very uh, warm welcome uh, for coming here and to, for listening to the talk, write and type, or how to use a uh, phone in a secure manner. Uh, or how, there is no presentation on yeah. Okay, here it is. Or how to use a uh, phone in a secure manner while riding the, the bike. So, obligatory introduction. Uh, I'm Igor Iglic. I'm uh, working for a uh, Bosch company. And this is... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rashko. I'm also working on a, for a Bosch uh, since 2021, last year. Yeah. So I uh, came to Bosch in 2018. Um, Bosch, uh, so uh, related to the talk, uh, we are from the com uh, company uh, Bosch RVSM. Um, uh, comp uh, Bosch Softec GmbH uh, was the company that has been established in 2018, uh, 2011. Excuse me as a subsidiary of uh, Bosch. Uh, starting in 2018, uh, in Belgrade office in uh, Robert Bosch, there was also a department created uh, called uh, Bosch Softec. Uh, my spin project has been um, a project with the idea to uh, establish a secure connection between the phone and the vehicle. Initially, uh, that was for the cars, and uh, the first code base has been created in 2014. Starting in 2016, uh, we have decided to uh, broaden our uh, supported range of vehicles uh, for two-wheelers. And now, oh, what's that? Well, this is a bit annoying. I mean, sunny day, you're enjoying your ride, then something happens uh, in your pocket. <laughs> is it a message, a girlfriend, mom, whoever? Your only option in that case is just to stay, sit, or find a place where you can pull off, turn off the bike, turn off your clumsy gloves, and if your phone have uh, face recognition unlocking, take off your helmet, and just to see it's just one more notification from the, from the bank and it's not your salary. Or, let's say I'm using uh, some specialized motorcycle, motorcycle application for navigation where it can find me at twisty roads or find me a good place to rest and I'm planning a whole trip there, etc. And I would like to use, for example, that application, that third-party application on my motorcycle. And this one have its own display, have its own head unit, which can show that. So, wouldn't it be perfect, for example, if I can just move or just send whole UI on the display of the motorcycle? It would be safer. Uh, it would be much more enjoyable. I could see it during the ride, I can maybe do something, maybe answer the text while I'm waiting on a traffic light, red traffic light. And that is something that I believe is my spin all about. Stop. Excuse me. So, This is the basic idea. So we have uh, multiple requests that we need to fulfill in order to, to solve this uh, problem. So obviously, we are not allowed to use a phone in any, any shape or form. So it can be with us. Uh, there is no interaction allowed because of the various laws and regulations and also because we as a company strive for uh, making uh, every of our pro pro products uh, secure and safe to use. So we need to somehow transfer uh, all of the contents that's uh, relevant to the user, to the cluster, or to the cluster, to the, to the display of the bike itself. So let's just take a, take a minute and figure out what we can do. Hmm. Okay, so first we need to 
transfer some video, so the visual content from the app, from the phone, to the bike itself. That's problem number one. Hmm. We need to control it somehow. So obviously, while you're riding the bike, you have your gloves on. Mm, it would be quite tricky to manipulate the, the touch screen. What if we would map certain controls, certain buttons from the handlebar to, and propagate that back to the app and to activate the specific action that we want? That's an option. We should do it. But also, I mean, we are supporting a wide, wide variety of um, the vehicles. So maybe not all of the vehicles are using, are being used with gloves. So let's support also the touch screen from the vehicle itself. What are all the other options that we can utilize? I mean, okay, we have a video feedback, we can take the input from the user, but hmm, what about the audio? So we are all used to um, using our vehicles together with the mobile, fo mobile phones, um, mainly for interacting with the phone call, or with the, with the, with the uh, phone itself in order to establish to receive and to call somebody, uh, to receive calls and to rec uh, call somebody. So, uh, for that reason, we have decided uh, to utilize the native uh, HFP protocols for the Bluetooth uh, to uh, establish that uh, functionality. We can also uh, use A2DP uh, to uh, stream uh, media content, so audio, to the vehicle itself. Um, hmm. Okay, so we, get, we got it covered. So we have the visual feedback, we can interact with the app, we got the audio, we can speak. Hmm. We can also fetch some uh, vehicle data from the various uh, uh, computers that are built inside the vehicle. So we are also supporting that custom uh, messages from the, from, from the, from the vehicle. Okay, uh, now that we covered communication uh, from the main application or our launcher, MySpin, with the head unit, with the, with the motorcycle, we can receive messages, we can receive events from handlebars, from touchscreen, whatever, and we can send stream of the images. What about that second scenario, where I want to use a third-party application for my, I don't know, ride planning or whatever, uh, what does had third-party developer had to do to connect to home application, to my spin, to be able to communicate with the motorcycle? First, to lift as much burden as we can from the third-party developer, we developed the application SDK. What does the third-party developer had to do with that? Uh, basically, nothing special just to link against that framework as first step. And the other step is to provide it with the UI. In the case of iOS, it's uh, in the form of UI view controller. Can it use the same view controller that is used in original application? Well, technically it can. But since there are some security or uh, safety considerations, it's probably best to adopt it a little bit like uh, size of font, it should be readable while you're on a bike. Uh, contrast, of course, things should be visible. And the other thing, you can, <laughs> there are some things that you can do while riding a bike, while riding a bike, and you cannot do that while, or sorry, you can do that <laughs> while not riding a bike, and bike is turned on, for example, on a traffic light, and you cannot do that while riding a bike. For example, I don't know, I can, if it's a long red light, I can play a tic-tac-toe. But immediately after bike starts, I shouldn't be able to do that. So basically, some adoption of logic should be also managed there. So how does the, how does the iOS do that? First, main application or home application, my spin, launcher advertise uh, its services or one service over the bonjour. Then, App SDK, after application is started or launched from the MySpin through the URL, the, uh, URL scheme, after application is started, gives everything 
to App SDK. After that, App SDK tried to discover the service over the Bonjour. When it discovered, it got enough information to make TCP connection, meaning that it get, it get uh, IP address, it get port number, etc. After that, after establishing TCP connection to a MySpin application, it is able to send images. That is a uh, job of the App SDK. It will send images to the MySpin, which will be transferred to the motorcycle. And of course, events from the motorci motorcycle commands will be transferred to the MySpin, to App SDK, and <laughs> everything will be working fine. Of course, application will be able to get some information, like uh, bike is moving or it's not moving. So, Okay, so for the Android side, we also need to solve the same problem. Uh, obviously, the platform is different, so we have uh, different tools at our disposal. Thankfully, Android OS uh, does provide certain mechanisms where you can do inter-process communication between the processes, between the third-party apps and the, the main launcher app that includes MySpin service. So for that, we have utilized a few different um, uh, technologies. Uh, so essentially, uh, we have created, created a custom MySpin, MySpin RPC protocol uh, that is based on the generic um, uh, messenger class from the Android OS itself. Uh, therefore, we, the ID of the, the, the message, we can essentially uh, communicate uh, any action to, from the service to the third-party app that includes uh, App SDK. Obviously, we also need to communicate from the uh, third-party app back to the service. And for those uh, reasons, uh, we have um, utilized also custom implementation of the native, uh, also again provided uh, interface class from the, from the Android OS, where we call method and call method, call method, and call return method. Uh, also, we use native to the Android OS uh, bundle classes uh, to share data. Uh, call return method is a blocking method, and we also expect a bundle in return. So we need to be worried, uh, worry about, we need to worry about it. Now, those two mechanisms do provide us with full mechanism to communicate from the service to the third party app. But unfortunately, they are not perfect. They are not perfect for all of our uh, use cases. So namely, there is some latency um, situation on certain devices, and uh, we cannot guarantee that uh, uh, every message that we expect is going to be received in appropriate manner. Also, uh, those are not appropriate for the relatively bigger um, packet sizes. Hopefully, <laughs> Android again uh, comes into rescue with the concept of shared memory. So, Android, Android OS um, provides us uh, with mechanism to exit out of the uh, sandbox of the, of the app. Uh, and if you have knowledge about uh, which uh, uh, memory allocation um, uh, you, 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 can you want to access, you can uh, essentially uh, exchange data, uh, binary data between any of the apps. Uh, we use this mechanism only for uh, capturing views. So as you can imagine, uh, vehicle screen, uh, uh, screen resolution of the, of the displays that are being integrated into the cars uh, have certain resolutions. Um, they are, uh, for most of the uh, supported um, vehicles, it's uh, HD resolution, uh, so the packets are relatively big in size. Therefore, whenever we establish MySpin connection, we first uh, create like this special, uh, special place in memory uh, with the exact expectation of the resolution uh, of the frame that we are going to transfer uh, to, the, to, to the service. Uh, with that knowledge, we inform the app SDK, and uh, whenever uh, there is a new content uh, being rendered on the, on the screen, uh, we essentially uh, get on-draw callback, and we automatically uh, put image into the uh, shared memory, uh, obviously in the appropriate format. Uh, then, after that, we just fetch uh, this image uh, from the shared memory uh, whenever the cluster asks us to uh, do it. So, the cluster itself uh, has, uh, is, is essentially polling uh, MySpin service, 
in order to uh, request every single frame. The reason for that uh, is that uh, starting back in 2014, um, uh, clusters that uh, have integrated MySpin uh, were not so powerful and uh, essentially they were very low on memory, on processing power and we needed to um, uh, provide like some safety measures around not overflowing or essentially blocking the uh, cluster itself from um, working. So yeah, that's uh, essentially the mechanism and how it works. Now, here is the complete um, diagram of uh, what MySpin platform essentially is today. So we have now in this talk uh, mostly talked about uh, this first part, uh, the smartphone, the launcher app, the third-party apps that uh, have MySpin SDK integrated inside them. But obviously we do have um, um, integration with various other services and or devices. So the main one for us is obviously integration with uh, Bosch, uh, um, my, uh, with, uh, with certified uh, Bosch cluster that has integrated and enabled uh, MySpin support. Uh, we establish that connection through various uh, means. So we do support USB, Wi-Fi, and uh, um, Bluetooth. And uh, we use uh, those interfaces for specific means. So some of the packets, some of the packages are being uh, sent exclusively through, uh, for example, USB or Bluetooth. So uh, USB or Wi-Fi. So uh, content of the screen, like the frame sequences that we send, is actually being, uh, being sent through the USB or Wi-Fi, depending on the type of connectivity that the vehicle itself has. Uh, audio is being shared through Bluetooth. Any other type of packet, package that we uh, support uh, is going through USB and Wi-Fi. Then, when it comes to the extending of the uh, let's say, uh, of our impact on the ecosystem of the, of the rider. We do support up to two helmets uh, that are, one is dedicated for the, for the rider, the other is for the passenger. Uh, and those helmets have integrated uh, headsets inside them so uh, both can uh, enjoy um, like uh, streaming content, like listening to the same music uh, at, at the same moment, uh, then answering the call, calling somebody. Um, what else? Oh yeah, they also do have, we also, do, uh, it's not, it's the, the cluster uh, feature. We do have uh, support for intercom, whereby, uh, because you can obviously, you heard the, the, the bike, uh, it's quite loud and you're wearing the helmet while, while riding, I don't know, 100 kilometers an hour. So essentially, uh, 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 rider and the passenger and rider are able to communicate through the intercom. Uh, we have also integration with the handlebars on the motorbike. So uh, we have a set of, let's say, my spin buttons that are relatively uh, easy to grasp to the, to the new user. Essentially, you have navigation, up, down, left, right. You have OK button, back button, and exit button. And uh, with uh, those uh, very small number of um, buttons, uh, and obviously because of the uh, restricted uh, uh, real estate that we have on the, on the, on the bike, uh, with, those, with those few buttons, we have implemented a custom uh, mechanism of uh, figuring out uh, what the, what's the action actually that, that the user wants to, uh, to use. Uh, that signal can be either analog or digital and is being sent again through the cluster itself to the, to the app. Cluster also do, uh, does support uh, communication with uh, uh, various ECUs or BCMs inside the vehicle and uh, a loud set of um, uh, data, uh, vehicle data, uh, can be transferred uh, back to the appropriate consumer on the, on the phone side. MySpin also includes uh, some uh, backend services that we use to uh, localize the, the, the content to enable certain features uh, per, for, for user. There are certain guidelines, I mean certain regulations in certain countries whereby you're not allowed to maybe use certain functionality, but with the support of the backend, uh, we can configure user experience uh, uh, per app, per app user. So that's mostly yeah. what I had in mind uh, for the... Uh, the yeah, the, I just want to just forgot 
in the beginning when presenting the whole system or when presenting the my spin, somebody could argue that, uh, I don't know, phone mount could be good <laughs> alternative to this uh, system, but it's not. I mean, you have your gloves on it, on, on your hands while driving, it's hard to uh, control the phone. It's hard to switch the application. Actually, you almost cannot. Uh, here, uh, my spin allows you to switch the application, to start the third-party application during the ride, during uh, or while you're on the bike. It also allows you to use that application from the handlebars, from the con <coughs> sorry, from the controls that you already have on the bike. So basically, it's safer, it's more convenient. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. So uh, we do have like we have multiple features. I mean, we have designed uh, our. Um, uh, we have a human machine interface that is specific for the or design guidelines that are specific for apps that support uh, motorbikes. So essentially, we need to take uh, into consideration what are the uh, what is the contrast be between the certain elements, uh, what is the size, whether or not it's uh, easily actionable by the user. Uh, um, uh, also, uh, what is the, 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 the order of the message of the audio messages that you receive? So we also support uh, um, uh, various streams. Uh, so a every app application can uh, share its uh, audio to the to the bike, but there are certain restrictions uh, that need needs to be followed. So, for example, if you have a, a critical um, message, like uh, maybe like there is uh, ice ahead. Uh, or ice patch on the road ahead. Maybe that's uh, a bit of, uh, it, maybe it should have a high, higher, higher importance uh, compared to the notification that you got a message from a lovely person, you know? So that's also uh, some, um, uh, that, 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 that was also part of our focus in order to improve the, the rider's uh, experience. Also, uh, as you know, we do provide uh, uh, support for a wide range of uh, uh, phones, so both platforms. Then also on, on the respective platform, you do have uh, devices that have completely different uh, aspect ratios on the screen, uh, completely different screen sizes, and, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the DPI. And we need to uh, somehow standardize that and uh, uh, make it work with the uh, resolution that is available on the on the vehicle uh, so therefore uh, we we are essentially we are having like a touch injection feature whereby we do tr the translation of the coordinates being uh, activated on the vehicle itself and being then propagated to the uh, uh, exact uh, section on the, on, the, on the phone so yeah that's I mean like I could talk <laughs> about this stuff more and more. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So, uh, we Bosch in Serbia, uh, we are always hiring. Uh, we are the location that has uh, more than 300 IT professionals. Uh, we do work in agile environment and uh, we, as you can see, we are uh, using quite like uh, edge, edge, edge technology, uh, quite state of the art. Uh, we do pay a lot of attention uh, to the quality of our products and to the safety. Uh, so, uh, if you have um, time, if you want to investigate what are the opportunities that uh, we as a company provide, please do uh, check us out and uh, also refer a friend if you think somebody would be a great fit. And for the end, uh, we have one video that uh, I guess that uh, most of you have already seen because this is introduction introductory just uh, video. Before you, just yeah. before you start, I, I forgot one more thing in the beginning. Uh, the guy you see so uh, in the beginning <laughs> who drove the motorcycle in is our colleague Radovan Chorovic, uh, iOS developer, and I believe that he is the main actor here. Yep, <laughs> the silent one. <laughs> so let's uh, take a look into this uh, quick video.
Thank you. Thank you. So we have like five minutes more to spare. Uh, so we have uh, already planned these five minutes for some Q&A session. Um, so there should be microphones on the side. Uh, yeah. Test. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm wondering, did you do some user research when like prototyping this device? Like, how did you end up choosing the, that specific implementation? Uh, that has been done multiple years ago. I wasn't part of it at the moment, uh, but I know that uh, every single Bosch product uh, that is being uh, used by the end customers is uh, uh, being, I mean, the use cases are always being analyzed. Uh, we are always anticipating uh, what could go wrong, how uh, we could possibly e even additionally improve the user ex experience. And we do have a pool of uh, groups. And sometimes, I mean, depending on the product itself, uh, I'm now speaking uh, broadly for the, for the Bosch itself. Uh, some uh, some uh, interviews uh, we do ourselves. I mean, uh, some, some groups uh, do them um, directly. Uh, for some other uh, um, um, investigations, I mean, we do hire external companies that are, specif uh, uh, that, that are specifically working uh, that kind of uh, uh, analysis. But uh, even um, if we do get some hints, for example, there were some wishes for uh, customers to um, maybe support uh, some maybe not so, let's say, safe uh, uh, functionality. We as a Bosch are, all, are always uh, thinking about if that could harm user or, or any other third party, whether that's, uh, uh, that would be hazardous to the, to the environment or to the um, objects, uh, we do not uh, follow uh, the, the requirements that we get from, uh, from those uh, interviews. So, yeah. I have one. Uh, how do you solve the uh, problem of uh, different uh, handlebars buttons on other motorcycles, other so, types? Uh, yeah, so we do work uh, closely uh, with uh, our uh, suppliers of uh, our uh, of the head unit, and uh, they essentially we do have a contracts. So we have uh, multiple um, my spin protocols that we support up, up until now, and we do have a set of functionalities that is required to be present on the vehicle that is going to integrate my spin. So uh, when my spin uh, feature is uh, active, uh, we do expect that the user has possibility to interact uh, with the specific set of buttons. There is, a, we, we support a, lim a more limited set. For example, we have, we call it two-way uh, control, uh, whereby a uh, user can uh, use only up and down to navigate anything on the screen, but we also support four-way control. And uh, obviously that's up to the agreement together with the OEM that is at the end going to uh, deliver this product to the, to the customer and essentially the customer's wishes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, guys, that's it. We are over time. Uh, we're going to be in the Bosch uh, stand uh, outside, and if you do have any questions, we are going to be there uh, for the next uh, few hours. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs>